Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm Jörg Schlatter. I'm the director of the ACS Bridge project, and it's a true pleasure to welcome all of you here today, just two days after you received the message that we will host actually this webinar. Um, in case some of your colleagues missed this webinar, don't worry, we will record this webinar and provide the link to the recording um, within the next couple of days. Today's topic is the ACS Bridge Program, how to become, become a bridge site or partnership department. Before we actually tackle this topic, I would like to share some things about myself. So again, I'm the director of the ACS Bridge project, but also I manage the graduate and postdoctoral scholar office, scholars office here at the American Chemical Society. My accent is not from the DC area or from California or anything like that. I'm from Germany originally. I'm a PhD chemist. I got my degree from the University of Heidelberg and I came to the States as a postdoc, did for many years academic research as a postdoc and then as a faculty member. When I was a faculty member at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, I had also the pleasure to start a career and professional development program for graduate students and postdocs. And it was there when I discovered actually the significance of diversity and inclusion in higher education. I launched the very first program which raised awareness for both of those topics. I will not talk about this project today. We have uh, way more important topics to tackle. But before I joined actually the American Chemical Society, I um, served as NSF program director and helped manage the Graduate Research Fellowship Program. And I could imagine that several of you were involved in some capacity uh, with that program, either as reviewer or as reference letter writer. And I might have interacted with some of you in um, that capacity. But today, it's my true, is it, it's a true honor to serve as the director of the ACS Bridge Project. And a huge project like that cannot be managed alone. Um, I'm happy to know that Christian Schiavoni is today with me. And Christian, maybe you quickly unmute yourself and show uh, yourself and introduce yourself. Let's see. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Chris Schiavoni. I'm a project manager for the bridge program here at ACS. Uh, I guess a little bit of background for my, about myself is I'm a chemist by training. I went to Furman for my four-year degree. And then I actually switched over to pharmacology for my grad work. And then I wound up at the ACS managing this wonderful program. And I will be assisting Jörg throughout the presentation today. Thank you. And without Chris, the whole IT stuff will not, would not work. I'm not talented at all with that. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jörg. Um, I would like to raise awareness that um, the co-PI team consists of Latrice Garrison. She's the vice president for education here at ACS. Benjamin Fiore Walker, he is the leader of the diversity programs office here at the American Chemical Society, and Terry Taylor, who's the director of the learning and career development unit at ACS. We receive guidance from our ACS advisory board specifically for this uh, bridge project. And I might talk a little bit more about this advisory board later on if you have questions. Most importantly, if you have questions throughout the presentation, please submit the questions via chat to us. Uh, Chris will collect all the questions in the background and will send them to me later on and uh, we will go step by step or question by question through the list and provide as many answers as possible today. If you cannot answer all the questions today, um, we will update our frequently asked questions sheet on our newly launched website, which is um, could be found at www.acs.org slash bridge. Alternatively, send us an email to our new email address, bridge at acs.org. Oops. So 
A brief reminder, the American Chemical Society is actually the world's largest scientific society. We have currently more than 150,000 members. We were chartered by Congress many, many years ago. Our vision is to improve people's lives through the transforming power of chemistry. And our mission is to advance the broader chemistry enterprise and its practitioners for the benefit of Earth and its people. You might be aware that we have four core values at ACS. And one of those four core values is specifically diversity and inclusion. ACS believes in the strength of diversity in all its forms because inclusion of diverse people, experiences and ideas leads to superior solutions to world challenges and advances chemistry as a global multidisciplinary science. And that means every division, every chapter, every unit working with ACS really embraces all four core values and specifically diversity and inclusion. In our division, where we are located, the ACS Education Division, we embrace diversity and inclusion for many, many years. We have two well-established projects which really focus on diversity. The first one which I would like to mention is Project SEED, where we support high school students to get research experiences, and also the ACS Scholars Program, which provides uh, financial support to undergraduate students from underrepresented minorities, minority groups. But now, with the new project, the ACS Bridge Project, we are able to support students who would like to go to graduate school. The ACS Bridge Project has, is founded on one um, intriguing result, if you look at the data available through um, the IPADS completion survey. Here you see on the left hand side in blue the percentage of um, under, underrepresented minority uh, students who receive an uh, undergraduate degree, it's 18%. Whereas only 11% of PhDs become, come from an underrepresented minority background. That means this 7% gap which exists, which we call the national achievement gap, is significant and in an ideal world we would close this gap so the PhD percentage matches the undergraduate degree percentage number. With the new funding from the National Science Foundation we are excited that um, we will be able to launch a bridge program which several of you might be of aware in other disciplines. Um, Christian, uh, would you guide us quickly through the first audience question which we have today? Yes. So the first question is, how familiar are you with bridge programs such as the American Physical Society bridge program? And if you could please select one of the three options, very familiar, sort of familiar, or not very familiar, please. And I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one, close. And I'm going to share the results. And it looks like the majority of everybody, 70% 70, 70 are not very familiar. 25% um, are sort of familiar. And only 5% are very familiar with similar bridge projects. Back to you, Jorg. Excellent. Thank you so much, um, Christian. That means this webinar would be ex especially useful for those who never heard about bridge programs before. But let me tell you um, that one of the earliest bridge programs was started uh, about five years ago by the American Physical Society. And I'm also delighted to know that one uh, site leader, Dr. John Peltz, will join us later today in the presentation and reports on his experiences running this bridge um, site um, in at Ohio State University. But the APS, the American Physical Society, um, also asked the American Chemical Society and other uh, scientific societies to partner up to submit a grant proposal to the National Science Foundation Includes program uh, earlier this year 
And we were delighted when we learned early September that we received $10 million over the next five years to really broaden participation in graduate education throughout the STEM disciplines. Um, in this huge project, we have 30 scientific societies involved, educational institutions, corporations, national laboratories, and other organizations. The American Chemical Society receives, uh, sorry, before I go to the American Chemical Society, I would like to share with you the vision of the Inclusive Graduate Education Network. The vision is to achieve equity for underrepresented groups in doctoral degree attainment in the physical sciences. But now, what does ACS do specifically in this large collaboration? We establish the ACS Bridge project, which has three goals. First, to increase within 10 years the fraction of chemical science PhDs awarded to underrepresented minority students to match the fraction of chemical science bachelor's degrees granted to these groups. Second, to develop, evaluate, and document sustainable model bridging experiences that improve the access to and culture of graduate education for all students with emphasis on those underrepresented in doctoral programs in chemical sciences. And lastly, to promote and disseminate successful program components to the chemical science community. How do we do that? We have two parts in our bridge project. We establish a bridge program and we have the bridge travel awards. In the bridge program, we help students to get into graduate school and to get um, finally a PhD degree. In the same program, we provide funds to, institution, to institutions to establish uh, those transitional programs and we provide access to a talent pool. The Bridge Travel Award part of our project uh, focuses only on students where we provide directly funds to underrepresented minority students to attend professional conferences that provide relevant career and professional development programming. Today, we only focus on the Bridge program. On this slide, I would like to share with you um, the core principle for this bridge program. At the core, this big blue box is an ACS bridge applicant database, which we currently develop, and it will be launched in December. And students who would like to go to graduate school just submit their graduate school application to ACS completely for free. And we'll talk to you about which kind of students might apply to this program. We open this ACS Bridge Applicant Database to a selected group of institutions. And those institutions screen the students and invite the students for an interview, might enroll some students. And those students who get into graduate school or get ready for graduate school through this ACS Bridge Applicant Database uh, uh, mechanism we call Bridge Fellows. The Bridge Fellows themselves, in general, would benefit from additional preparation to significantly increase the chance of gaining admission into a chemical science doctoral program. So, which kind of students we expect apply? There's this group which applied to one or maybe two grad school programs and didn't get into. And because of whatever reason, maybe they don't have the financial resources, they don't approach um, further graduate school uh, applications in the traditional way and would be intrigued because they could apply for free to the ACS Bridge program application module. Some of them maybe did not apply at all because of whatever reason. Some of the students might need additional preparation to be ready for graduate school. 
But what they all have in common is that they envision that with a research-based PhD degree, they would find a career which leverages their talents. We talked about the students who apply to the bridge program. But what about the institutions which might or might not have access to this database? Well, in our program, we have three different kinds of institutions. We have bridge sites, we have bridge partnership institutions, and we have bridge community departments. How do they differ? I admit this is a large table with a lot of information, but we will break it down slowly. Let's first focus on the ACS bridge site. And by the way, you don't have to take notes. What Christian and I will do, we will provide the uh, slides as a PDF to you after this webinar, uh, latest by Monday. <laughs> okay, so the ACS bridge sites can get financial support of up to $180,000 for three years. Yes, they have access to the database, and not only access, they have early access. Those bridge sites will have access earlier than, for example, the ACS bridge partnership departments. And the only other thing which I would like to point out on that slide is that to become an ACS bridge site, you have to submit a proposal. And the deadline for the pre-proposal submission is fairly soon. Oh. I see there's a typo, it's not 2019, it's 2018, November 5th, 2018. And the slides which you will get ha will have the proper year. Um, again, what is a bridge site? It's a chemical science department, chemistry or chemical engineering. The ACS bridge site receives ACS funding. It selects and hosts ACS Bridge Fellows, and it provides to those students research experiences, advanced course coursework, mentoring experiences, and also they will monitor progress of those students and provide coaching to the students to guarantee that they succeed in getting their PhD degree. But also those ACS Bridge sites have demonstrated commitment to build a sustainable program sustainable which will be necessary for the time which it comes after the ACS funding runs out. Funding. Each bridge site gets could get up to $180,000 for three years. How does this number um, get together, right? Each bridge site get a flat rate payment of $25,000 per bridge fellow. The stipend and benefits can be covered through that. Up to two bridge fellows can be funded per year. A bridge site can receive funding for up to three years. And in each of those years, the bridge site would receive $10,000 for as institutional support to support an administrator who helps run this program on the institution site. I know this can be confusing, but we generated a little example. So let's say institu institution A was selected as a bridge site. Institution A decides that they would like to get three bridge fellows on their campus in year one. They would receive here in green, two times $25,000, two times the stipend for two students, plus the $10,000 administrative support that makes a total of $60,000 in the first year. When the second year, and by the way, for the third fellow, uh, funding must be provided through that institution. In the second year, there's another round, of course, of um, the application cycle, and institution A decides to select two of the bridge, two new bridge fellows. Those two new bridge fellows will get $25,000 flat rate payment from ACS. $10,000 administrative support sums up to $60,000.
In year three, the same institution selects three more ACS Bridge Fellows. And again, only two of those three new Bridge Fellows will get a stipend through the ACS Bridge funding. If you sum it up, it's a total of $180,000 over three years. I think um, this um, might help clarify where the funding will go to. So which institutions are actually eligible for funding? Those are universities and colleges that offer, that offer a master's or doctoral degree in the chemical sciences, chemistry or chemical engineering. Those institutions must be located and accredited in the United States or Puerto Rico, and uh, the institutions must have active research programs readily available to bridge fellows throughout the academic year. One note to the person who leads the program on the site, it should be a tenured or tenure track faculty member in the chemical science department. So keep in mind uh, if someone uh, suggests a non-tenure track faculty member leading that program, that will not work. It's not, um, this uh, program would not be eligible for funding through the ACS Bridge program. To receive funding and early access to the applicant database, um, the institution would have to submit an initial proposal. The initial proposal has to be submitted on November 5th, 2018, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. What components are included in this initial proposal? Which has to be submitted as a single PDF document to me using that email address. Everything what is spelled out here, you will find actually in the request for, request for proposal PDF, which you received already by email. We might Chris, a side note for us, we should add the request for proposal to the follow-up email, which we will send to every attendee. So the initial proposal will include five components. Within a three-page limit, it's very short, the applicant or the proposer should give a project overview, should describe the project goals, Please include the numbers of students you intend to admit into your program on an annual basis, the time they will spend in the program, and your rationale for why they will be successful in transitioning into doctoral programs, either at any institutions out that, outside uh, here in, in the US or at your own institution. You also have to describe the infrastructure available. What is the setting, your institution, your department? You should provide da a data table for the last three years. How many graduate students did you have in your programs? How many graduate students had an underrepresented minority background? You should also share with us which existing programs and efforts are in place at your university or at the department level which support diversity. You should also list the project team, a list of key faculty members and staff who help implement the project and also their primary, primary responsibilities within that project. The fourth component um, includes a long list of items which are critical for success of a bridge program. You should address how admission decisions are made on your campus, financial support, mentoring infrastructure, a word about community, coursework, research, progress monitoring, application monitoring, application coaching, sustainability. We could talk about that list for at least two hours, but I would refer at this point to the request for proposal where we exactly describe what you might want to take into consideration while talking about those different points. And the last component of the initial proposal is a very brief budget. It's basically just a summary. So let's assume you all submit your initial proposal. 
you're all very excited. We are excited to get your proposals. It's very, 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 very rewarding to see the strong interest in the chemical science community for this program, by the way. So we will receive uh, those proposals on November 5th, and we will go to work and review all the proposals with help of different uh, committees here at ACS and with the ACS Bridge Project staff. We will make a decision end of November, early December, and we will we will inform those institutions who are allowed to submit a full proposal early December. We expect that we would invite about six institutions to submit a full proposal. The six institutions have about a month to prepare a full proposal, which have to be, has to be submitted by January 4th, 2019, 5 p.m. Eastern time. We will do a further review and the final announcement of the bridge sites will be made end of February or early March. Very briefly, and that is a step already ahead, if you're invited for a full proposal, it looks similar to the abbreviated version, but uh, you have more space to write about all the project components. And, um, and keep in mind, the project description has now 15 pages available take advantage of all the pages and um, we also will allow, um, we will have additional sections, we need references, we need biographical sketches, we need current and pending support for um, those projects and we need letters of support and a NSF style budget. Again, that is all clearly outlined in the request for proposals which you have received already. So let's shift our focus to the ACS Bridge Partnership Department. Yes, there's a huge difference. The ACS Bridge Partnership Department does not get funding to establish this bridge program on site. However, the ACS Bridge Partnership Department can use the ACS Bridge Program applicant database to search for underrepresented minority students who would join their graduate program, a master's or PhD granting program. It's a wonderful additional recruitment tool for you. So the ACS Bridge Partnership Department is basically, again, a chemical science department, chemistry, chemical engineering. Um, this department is in general interested in recruiting students into the master's or doctoral programs. It selects and enrolls ACS Bridge Fellows into graduate programs. And it is, it is in general committed to ACS Bridge Program principles. Um, if some of you would like to shoot for becoming a Bridge Partnership Department, you have a little bit more time. The deadline for the application is early March. And the application is very straightforward. We will publish the request for proposals early November on our website, acs.org slash bridge. And we will provide a template which you could use to prepare the proposal. It's very, very straightforward. And um, the components of the proposal look very familiar departmental overview, faculty engagement, mentoring activities, admission practices, advising and induction, progress monitoring, um, different data and demographics uh, from your department will be required. I think, uh, Chris, at this point, we are ready for another um, round of audience question. Absolutely. So our next question is, which of the affiliated ACS Bridge departments will have access to the ACS Bridge applicant database? And you can please select any of the answers below, either one, two, all of them, or none of them. And I will close this in five, four, three, two, one. And it looks like just about everybody has voted. So I'm going to close this and I will share the results. And it looks like everybody can see 100% for the partnership departments. 
88% for bridge sites and then only 6% for community departments. And here is Jorg again. Thank you. By the way, Chris, you have showmaster talent. <laughs> so thank you very much for those uh, uh, nice questions. Just as a reminder, the applicant database will be opened only for the ACS bridge sites and the ACS bridge partnership departments. If an institution, if a department has only ACS bridge community department status, then they will not have access to the bridge application module data set. Well, let's move on with a very exciting part of this presentation. It's a true pleasure to introduce today uh, Dr. Jonathan Peltz. Peltz. He's a professor and vice chair for graduate studies um, at the Department of Physics at the Ohio State University. And he's currently also the co-leader of Ohio State's physics bridge program. And let me see if I can unmute John. And I, oh, and John is here with, with a wonderful colleague. John, we should be able to hear you, no? John, can you unmute yourself? I should Excellent. be unmuted now. Uh, so, Jay, why don't you introduce so yourself? I'm Jay Gupta, I'm co-director of our bridge program and uh, also in the physics department at Ohio State. But Jay did receive a chemistry degree uh, as an undergrad. And, and I'm, I am an off and on a ACS member, depending on what my conference uh, attendance. Well, I have to look up the membership status in a moment, <laughs> the current one. No, thank you so much for joining today, um, Jay and John. Um, I think it would be very helpful for chemistry faculty members and chemistry department chairs uh, to learn about how you prepared for the very first um, application, for the very first proposal, which you submitted, I believe, in 2012 or 2013 to get the funding, right? Yes. So what, what do you think was the most critical element for your proposal? Um, in general, I think we had made a determination as a, a well, we assembled a group of uh, faculty members who were very committed to the concept of bridge programs. Um, and uh, that is very important that you have a group of people who are gonna be working on this with you um, who are, I would say, passionate about the topic. Um, it's not really something that I think you can pull off just as an individual in terms of leading. So forming a group was very important um we it's also before you were to submit a full proposal i think you will need to get serious support from your upper administration uh ideally with matching support uh and i think having the funds from the acs bridge program uh will demonstrate to the administration that you are very serious about this um, and so find allies within the administration um, who also are fighting to support diversity. Uh, yeah, okay. the, time, the time sequence is a little bit fuzzy, but I know one, one thing that was important is that uh, we also had a faculty meeting vote on this and it was supported unanimously by the faculty. So even though we have, a, in addition to kind of like a group of on the order of 10 to 15, uh, faculty and staff that help with the running the program and admissions and, and that kind of thing. Um, we had unanimous support from all of the faculty. And one reason that's important is because these students end up getting spread over, you know, with research advisors in all the fields. So that was something that we hadn't anticipated initially, but we really need to have a, everyone to buy in because almost all the faculty are either teaching the bridge students or will be mentoring them. Very good. So if I understood it correctly, there were three critical components. Forming a passionate team in your department, making sure everyone is on board with a vote in a faculty meeting, and thirdly, getting buy-in from the administration and um, potentially the agreement to match funds if the uh, award would be granted. Excellent. I'll, yeah, I'll modify that a little bit. I think the uh, faculty vote 
was not essential, but it was very useful in terms of convincing, in our case, convincing the American Physical Society that we were serious about this, um, and also convincing the administration. But yes, you will definitely want to have uh, partners in uh, the college and other administrators in the university. Excellent. So clearly, you were invited for a full proposal. So what was your strategy to craft a successful full proposal? Did you change your strategy? Did you, what did you refine? What, how did you approach that? Um, I think it was mainly expanding what was in the white paper, but thinking through the issues. Um, how would you provide uh, good mentoring? How would you do handle your admissions? Um, one of the questions I believe was, what was our plan for sustainability uh, after the three years of the uh, APS funding? And so it was to expand on, uh, on these different aspects. And we did spend a good amount of time trying to think through. Um, I should add that we did make, uh, there had been some existing, there were existing uh, physics bridge programs, and especially the one at um, Fisk Vanderbilt. I don't know if people, you have heard of the Fisk Vanderbilt bridge program. That includes actually several disciplines and they made a lot of material available to the public. Uh, they have a website where you can learn a lot about some of their best practices, and we did uh, take advantage of that. And a lot of the best practices are not really um, uh, discipline specific. So that would be a good place to look as well. Excellent. Um, so your full proposal was successful as well. Um, and just as a brief reminder, everyone in the audience, the ACS Bridge Program is modeled after the APS Bridge Program. And those who were familiar with the APS Program recognized basically all, most of the elements which we just presented. So I think it is really critical to listen carefully to Jay and, uh, um, and uh, John um, about their advice they have how, how to craft those uh, successful components. We, that is the fir very first year in chemistry that we do that, so we have no idea how many initial proposals we will receive, what the quality is, what is the outstanding, what makes a proposal in the chemical sciences outstanding or not, but um, learning from the physics colleagues might help you uh, find some guidelines. APS and the other bridge sites have uh, a wealth of information online um, on their websites, but also I understand some of the um, bridge sites published about their programs. And we will get to the publications a little bit later, Jay and um, John. But now, since you got the full funding, how did you create the program and looking back um, what would you have done differently? What, what are the keys for a successful program and what was the big challenge for you? Um, actually, I want to start by interjecting something about the elements of the bridge uh, program that APS did and which AC is doing now. This nationwide recruiting of students I want to point out something there. That turned out to be extremely useful. Um, we found that in the pool of students who applied to this nationwide database were many students who we would have accepted directly. It's just they had not applied to us. And so I want to emphasize that uh, if you do have access to the nationwide database, I think you will find a number of students who are good matches for your institution um, but uh, for many reasons, they, one reason or another, they didn't, hadn't applied. So that's an important element of this. Um, we've learned a lot. Uh, it is important to do the selection carefully. Uh, we followed the Fisk Vanderbilt uh, protocol by 
of course, actually doing phone interviews with all the applicants on our shortlist. And that you find that's really important because you need to find students who are um, motivated, really motivated for getting a, a PhD. Uh, so one thing in the initial phase was we learned uh, we can't uh, just uh, treat the students like a, like we had been historically, like this kind of sink or swim model, or just kind of admitting them in and assuming they'll they'll figure things out and do everything fine on their own. Uh, so like initially we kind of uh, realized that we need to provide help with things like you know finding housing and financial issues. Uh, and in later years, also even delving into personal health issues. So it's it's probably a little bit more kind of, it might feel intrusive at first, but it's definitely necessary for helping these students succeed. And I, I think that took us a few years to come around to. I mean, we kind of had been going in that direction even before, um, but I've noticed that that's definitely a sea change kind of in how you treat graduate mentoring in general. Mentoring is really important uh, and progress monitoring. So one of the things that we now do very carefully is uh, check with course instructors uh, from, from when the first homework is handed in to try to gauge whether students are engaged. Um, following, uh, and then if we detect issues, then to try to, to meet with the students, try to point them to the appropriate resources. I think in preparing your proposal, I think you need to think about uh, how you're and carefully describe how you're going to do the progress monitoring and how you're going to provide academic support. I don't uh, uh, for students who might be struggling in that regard. And so I think having sort of thought through those different elements was one of the things that uh, the APS said made our proposal look strong. But Mon uh, mentoring is very important. Uh, let me ask you, do you have on your campus some kind of mentoring training for faculty? Uh, that's a good question. Um, we're getting more into that now. There's more of that. Uh, when we submitted the proposal, there was not formal mentor mentoring training. So I just want to let everyone know as part of the IGEN project, the Inclusive Credit Education Network. So that's a huge project and ACS has one sliver of that grant. Under this umbrella, we also have a strong mentoring training component which will be accessible to um, the new bridge sites and potentially the partnership institutions, which would help and catalyze the mentoring efforts on your campus. So that will be very important. Um, before we uh, ask you, uh, more questions, Jay and John. I would like to quickly look which audience questions we received. I would like to tackle quickly two. Um, the first question is, if department provides admin support, can those $10,000 be used for research expenses for students? So before I share the ACS view, I'm just wondering, because I know the APS model has, uh, I think, $10,000 for admin support as well. How do you use it on, on, on the Ohio State campus? Let's see. The I think that's a little bit uh, difficult to say explicitly. Um, we had a dedicated the graduate program coordinator was a very important part of this program from the start. Um, to a large extent, we had agreement from our chair that she could spend a significant amount of time on the project. And so we used the extra resources um, provided for admin support um, in part to uh, cover some of the costs that the department would otherwise have covered uh, for their for their time. So it was kind of mixed in with the general budget. Yeah. Uh, but be prepared that uh, you need to make sure you have agreement from your chair uh, that for some staff time. Uh, that will be very important around admissions time and also during um, 
some of this uh, progress monitoring that I was talking about. So what I would add is uh, from the ACS side, we have to know who the contact persons are on the ground on the specific campus of the bridge site. So there must be a dedicated person and having that in writing and the confirmation from the chair and from the dean that a certain uh, time allotment is guaranteed for the administrator to work on that project will be critical. Um, we said on one slide admin support. I would maybe rephrase it at this point. I would call it more institutional support. It's more a flat rate, flat, uh, rate payment and the department can decide how they would like to use it. If there's already a dedicated person there, great, and if, if a, a salary doesn't have to be supported through the $10,000, that's fine as well. It's up to the discretion of the department how to use those $10,000 to support overall the project itself, right? If it's used for any kind of expenses which, which help um, the advancement of the students, that is fine as well. It has to be used for the bridge project in some way or another. So the second question is, um, how are the selected institutions that receive the student data base access, how are they selected? Well, uh, very briefly again, Institutions who would like to get those uh, access to this data to this database, there are two, right? The bridge sites. We talked about the whole proposal system, and the partnership institutions, which have also access, they would have to submit a, a abbreviated proposal. We will um, update our website by November, early November, with the guidelines and the proposal template. So it is fairly straightforward, uh, but there will be a review of that proposal and we expect that not everyone who submits a proposal will get access. There must be a demonstrated commitment um, to supporting underrepresented minority students um, towards uh, getting their graduate degree. And that includes mentoring, induction, support for finding research projects, etc., as it will be outlined in the uh, request for proposals. So there will be another application process and there will be a review process. Okay, um, I saw that Jay and John were talking in the background and I think they, they want to share something else. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, uh, I think we're remembering back we in terms of this $10,000, we uh, used that also for academic support. Uh, so that was very helpful to have someone identified that can help the bridge students with their coursework from day one if necessary. This could be a graduate student. Uh, you can think of it as a tutor. We actually have a, um, a physics education research group and there was a postdoc who was very in, interested in figuring out uh, different ways of providing academic support. So I think it is important to have thought through uh, if a student needs some extra help, who is going to be available to provide it? And of course, uh, how is that person going to be compensated? Very good. Thank you for sharing that. Um, we have now more questions from the audience. Uh, one straightforward question is, um, can a second, third or fourth year PhD student who is a minority apply for the ACS Bridge Funds? And the answer is no. Uh, it, it must be um, someone who is not, in a, not enrolled in a PhD program. Um, the other question I will probably answer by email. It's fairly complex and I think I will tackle that um a little bit later today christian did can you forward me another set of questions and um as we wait i'm wondering about advice from from jay and john uh, regarding leveraging institutional resources to make this program a success so um, 
is there anything else you could share with with our group how you think would be a good strategy to get matching funds and maybe um, creating a sustainable model which goes beyond the APS funding uh, I think most institutions who are that are committed to increasing diversity you will find potential allies uh, we have an office of diversity and inclusion generally university-wide and uh, separate offices or separate uh, people working on this in the grad our graduate school and on our college uh, so definitely go to those people. I think it's really important to make sure they understand how this kind of a bridge program is different from other um, diversity initiatives. Uh, at our graduate school, there are fellowships that are available to try to attract students from underrepresented backgrounds. But then what we're doing, if we win a fellowship like that, we're basically trying to convince an otherwise uh, qualified student to come to our university rather than go somewhere else. Hmm. Whereas a big program very much is trying to um, increase the pool, increase the number of students who might not now be ready to go into grad school or who failed to get into grad school because they didn't apply to the right places to be successfully transitioned into graduate school and a PhD program. And so I think you can make an argument how this is a different kind of model than a number of uh, bridge programs that exist. Also make sure there are lots of bridge programs. There's bridge from high school to college from, um, and uh, for getting initiated into college. So make sure they understand the nature of this bridge program. It's really to increase the number of students, graduate students who will be successful. Uh, one piece of advice, uh, the stipend that APS will cover, that's for the stipend. Uh, there's also tuition. Um, I think it's highly likely that many people will be able to, uh, we call them tuition awards from our graduate school. And so that was a big, a key part was to convince uh, the people who are in a position to cover tuition that this is a good good way for them to spend their tuition dollars if they're interested in, in increasing diversity. So graduate school, and then um, we argued to our department that this was important, and so physics was willing to provide this. Um, and we, we had uh, our divisional dean in the college was willing to provide additional support. So it will take a little time to go around to people, make them understand that this is a different kind of a program, and um, ask for some matching support in different ways. Um, you may find uh, a dean who is very on board and would support the whole thing. I mean, by all of the matching funds, but we needed to go to different organizations to get it together. Um, to, just, just based on how tight budgets were at different levels, yes. the more you can leverage, the, the better. Um, in convincing your colleagues that this is a good idea, I think it is a good point, good idea to point out how this can impact the broader impacts section of NSF proposals. And uh, we have had a number of faculty members uh, who have added elements of bridge program to their, for example, career awards. And we've had several successes, and even the ones that were not successful, this reviewed very well. And so having a bridge program that individual faculty members can partner with the bridge program when they're submitting proposals, um, I think is uh, something which is quite beneficial from having a bridge program, frankly. So, um, also NSF, <clears throat> NSF centers also can partner with the bridge program. And so for us, it was important to have initial support from our materials research center, uh, which is a, a large NSF center here at OSU. And they've been our partner since the initial stages of the bridge program. And they give us money also. Uh, that kind of matching funds is important. Mm -hmm. 
so um, just uh, a comment as a former NSF program director, broader impacts is a critical element in the review process at NSF. And if you can demonstrate that you have something on your campus which, which indicates that you're really interested and capable of having a broader impact, such as a bridge site, uh, the bridge partnership department status, for example, it is it is helpful. It is helpful. It doesn't mean that you will get automatically the grant. Everything else must be perfect, but it could set you apart from your competitors if you can really demonstrate that. So we got um, another question, which actually I think John can answer. John, what was or is your strategy for retention and higher success rate in the pool of bridge fellows that have gone through your department or program? Um, I think it really comes back to mentoring and progress monitoring. Uh, there are, I think, as people who have mentored graduate students know, there are lots of ways that a reasons why a graduate student might not uh, advance through the program. Might be academic issues. Um, there could be, uh, Jay mentioned this, could be health issues that they are uh, sometimes not wanting or embarrassed to ask for help. Um, it could be financial issues. Um, one of the things we find from students from underrepresented backgrounds is that family ties are extreme, can be extremely important. And uh, sometimes um, the, their family may be even be depending on some financial contributions from the, uh, from the student. It's important to be aware of these things and to try to help where you can. Um, I, I got a good piece of advice. Um, I'm not remembering uh, where it was from now, but I was asking the question when I'm mentoring a student, I get embarrassed sometimes or I'm not sure if it's appropriate if I ask them some questions about their personal life. If I sense that there's a problem, um, but uh, not sure what it is, and this person sort of advised me is that if, if that problem is getting in, a way, getting in the way of the student advancing, then yes, it's, uh, it's appropriate to try to understand and to let the student know that you're trying to understand just so that you can try to help them. Mm. So um, there can be a lot of things. It's really the progress monitoring and then being willing to jump in and trying to help the student navigate a hurdle uh, is very important uh, for students who run into those hurdles. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that with us, uh, John. I think we have time for one more question. And the question which I would like to cover is following. Is it possible or advisable to have a multi-department proposal, for example, chemistry plus chemical engineering? Um, that is a very, very good question, and I would like to go back to um, the request for proposal, which outlines the eligibility criteria. So we say there, a bridge site must be a university or college that offers master's and doctoral degree in the chemical sciences. It doesn't say specifically it must be a more individual department. So it is possible, but if it's adv advisable, it very likely depends on how you spin and convey the added value of having two departments collaborate. So I think uh, it's possible, advisable. I can't really comment on that. It really depends on, on, on how you would like to set up that constellation. We are almost at three p.m. At this point, I would like to thank really a lot John and Jay for joining us today and uh, sharing with us their insight into uh, the APS Bridge program set up at their institution and sharing with us their recommendations and their thoughts on how to craft a successful pre-proposal and full proposal for becoming a ACS um, bridge site. So thank you so much Jay and John and also thank you so much everyone um, in the audience for joining today 
As a follow-up, you will receive an email latest by early next week, which includes a PDF of the slides, but also, again, the request for proposal as a PDF. Um, feel free to share the request for, propo for proposals with colleagues at other institutions. Um, we will have this uh, selection procedure not only this year, we will have it in three different years. We will be able to fund um, up to five bridge sites, two in year one, two in year two, and one in year year three. So we will repeat that. And even if you're not successful potentially this year, there will be another year and then another one. And I'm pretty sure with the feedback from, from ACS, you will be able to refine your proposals. Um, thank you so much for joining. Um, you will receive an email next week and um, have a wonderful day. Jay John, thank you, thank you so much.